Good afternoon. Yeah, OK, Thank you. thanks. Well, my name is Guilherme Almeida. Uh, I work uh, in Brazil for Goldrick Consulting. Uh, I've been with uh, GC since 2010 and working with TLC since 2005. Uh, OK, my name is Silvério. I work in GC in Brazil as well, in the same time that Guilherme. And we are show the presentation today about the replenishing fashion mover in MTO. Now, to start, um, the retail solution uh, is the most recent solution that was developed in, in TLC. Uh, you can see the, the book. It's not obvious, it was, was the last one that Coldred, uh wrote. And it's probably where uh, TLC uh, has more opportunities I would say both to learn and to contribute. The objective of this presentation is to share some, uh, some results of uh, one uh, viable vision implementation and, and some insights that we had about this, this environment. First of all, let's, uh, let's describe the environment. The business is fashion clothes. Uh, the market is huge for, for, this, for this business. And one uh, thing which is uh, interesting is that even the, the giants in this business, like Zara, like H&M, uh, CNA, they have a very small fraction of the, of the business itself. Uh, for example, in Brazil, these big giants, they have less than 5% of market share. Um, the company we are going to talk about is uh, one of the major Brazilian retail chain. And uh, what is unique about this company is that it's a fully integrated supply chain. What I mean by that, it's, uh, it's from the thread until the last installment, which means that they have even a, a branch of financial, which is uh, they have their own private label uh, credit card. So it's, uh, it's include the whole uh, scope of the, of the business. So some characteristics of this company, they launch every month uh, more than 3,000 new products, which are developed by internally. Uh, they have more than 40,000 employees, considering all this of this business together. They have more than 300 stores uh, all over Brazil. They don't have any store outside Brazil. Um, they have three warehouses, uh, regional warehouses, they have seven, in total, seven uh, different factories. Uh, six of them are for uh, producing an uh, end product, which is clothes. And one of them is for producing the fabric, from the thread into the, the fabric. So uh, it's more than a billion dollars uh, sales. So basically, this, this is the... I would say this, the description of roughly the, the company. About the environment, uh, the fashion clothes market is extremely dynamic. So it means that you see new things coming in the store, in stores every single day. Uh, many products with a very short life cycle or even shelf life. We vary from uh, one month until six months. Uh, many products sell less, less than the first bat produ production, even if it's a, a big retail chain and the production batches are not very big. In some cases, uh, the production or the sales is significantly uh, lower than the, the, small, the, first, uh, the first batch. There is a large uh, accumulation of uh, inventory obsolescence. Uh, some items, and we are going to talk a lot of, about it, sell uh, more than the initial forecast and uh, quickly are, are in stockouts in the stores. Uh, we, are, we are going to devote some time on explaining what is the dynamic on this. And uh, significant uh, sales are lost for certain, certain items. If you would describe it in a more simpler way, uh, the fashion clothing market is extremely dynamic. There are three dynamics that we have in this market, which is the consumer are more sensitive to get products that fit their individual uh, uh, tastes and desires. Um, you can see uh, it through the range increase 
that we have in these markets. Uh, they're growing uh, a lot. Just to give you some figures, in some uh, small stores, they have more than 50,000 SKUs. Um, consumer tolerance is getting shorter and shorter. And this kind of business or this kind of company, they uh, have a kind of self-service uh, for, the, for the products. So they don't have salespeople in the stores trying to sell you something. It's just to uh, help you to find where the products, products are. And uh, customers expect new products, uh, which means that the product life cycle is getting shorter and shorter. And this is uh, mandatory for, uh, re uh, I would say, guarantee that the customer is going to uh, come uh, very often to the store. If it doesn't uh, present some kind of freshness, the, the risk of not getting or generating some traffic is, is very high. If you can see uh, these uh, implications on the, on the actions that these companies are doing, the brands and retailers are operating with a wider hand, range. Uh, and this is uh, pushing the customers to asking for more range itself. It's a reinforcement loop. The same happens for uh, pushing uh, stock or getting higher stock close to the end, consumer which is uh, reducing the tolerance time, so getting another reinforcement loop, and the customer expecting new products, which is uh, the pressure to introduce new items is getting higher and higher. The customer is used to, do, to it, so uh, another reinforcement loop. Do you agree that this is not specific for this kind of environment? Do you see this in other environments, like, for example, electronics? What do you think? Does this slide remind you anything? Sorry? Exactly. Rami's presentation, right? What, what, what is the direction of solution? Let's see. Come on. What, what is the direction of solution for this? What is the, the sole way in order to deal with this situation? Come on. Reducing time to read the signals and reduce the sign to replenish. This is the essence. And this is a very profound uh, insight that I think it's, I would say that this is one of the main uh, aspects and the important points that uh, we get from this uh, TLCICO. Now let's talk about some uh, results. Whoops. Okay. Okay. On the retail side, sales had increased 30% with less 50% of inventories, and mainly the inventories in the stores. Uh, the margins, or the throughput, increased by three, three points, which represents a little bit less than 10%, and this is the benchmark, in the, at least in the country, for the, I would say, comparing to the competitors. And the level of discounts reduced by 30%. Okay, the impact on the cash flow was $40 million so far. Some results of the implementation in production, basically in the end products. Lead time reduced from 45 days to 11 days in less than two years, so improvement of 75%. In some cases, they made some kind of tests the lead time can be as short as three days from issuing the order until they get to, to the stores. CCR efficiency, which is the sealing process, before was 55%. Now it's uh, 80%. Improvement was 32%. Surface, I mean, 51,000 square meters, reduced to 35,000. 
6,000 square meters, so you can imagine the size of these uh, factories. So improvement of 30%. And due date performance, it was 70% calculated on a monthly basis to 95% on a weekly basis. So improvement is 35%. Then, what to change in this environment? What we need to understand to better act in this environment? The sales curve is one of the most import important points in this company because we have a huge, sto a huge uh, concentration of sales. We call head the portion that we can see in this thin line that we call the products that sell between 10 and 30% of sales. It means the, the, the products, this thin line, sell around 30% of total sales of company. The belly, we call the products that sell around 4 to eight, or, may, or better, uh, 40 to 8 percent. And tail, we call the products that sell the other portion and not sell. It means these data are according the most important peak of the year. It's around 15, year, 15 days that is the most important moment of sales of the year. Which, which is the Christmas time, which is where the traffic is the highest. Yeah. In Brazil and I imagine in other countries as well. Okay. Then, when we're looking for these items, we saw most of the items didn't sell nothing. In 20, 250 stores, in the most important moment sales in the year. It's a huge concentration. Let's zoom in this curve, looking only for the products that sell something, okay? Then to reinforce, we have the head with 30% of sales. We have the belly with the 50% of sales and the tail only with 20% of sales. Here we have some definition about these curves that I already said. And we have the correlation between these categories with the stock. When we look in the head, the head accumulate only 15% of stock. The belly accumulate 33% of stock, 35% of stock. And the tail accumulate 50% of stock. That means the most drive of stock is the tail. If we need to focus in some category, which category we can focus? How do you think? How do you think? Which, which kind of category of products we should focus, for example, in terms of availability. Okay. Right. Then let's check some current reality three about this environment. As we said, the fashion clothes and markets is extremely dynamic. Then we launch around 3,000 new products every month. Many products sell less than expected. For this pro pro these products, there are a large, obsolete inventory. Well, just to be a little bit more precise, when we say many, we say the vast majority of the products sell so much less than expected, is expected. Much less or nothing. Yeah. On the other hand, some products sell more than expected. These products uh, coming stock out quickly. Then we lost sales. 
what we can do in this situation? Well, for Future Reality 3, the standard solution is put these items in MTA. We can guarantee the availability for this item, okay? We want to have a very high availability of this item, that let's remind. These are the items which are driving, the main drivers of the sales. Okay. Then, if we do that, we're supposed to reduce loss and disconnect this other branch in the reality tree. Okay? But maybe the reality show us some negative brands. The demand may fall drastically. If the demand fall drastically and we have fast movers in MTA, maybe we reinforce the large obsolete inventory. At the same time, many pro products have a very short life cycle. We have together the demand fall drastically. We, if we replenish MTA, we increase the obsolete inventory. You, we experience that in some different products when we start to make MTA in this environment. Remember that this is an environment, when we say dynamic, it's getting new items every day. And the taste, I mean, the fashion is something which is very dynamic. It can change according to something which a big star, star is wearing or things like this, or appears in the TV. So uh, the demand really can uh, change very drastically in a very short period of time. Then let's check some drawbacks for MTA in this environment. We cannot assess in advance the lifetime of a fast mover. Even a fast mover, we only we just know, we just don't know. Regardless, it's sales performance. There is no automatic control mechanism to turn it off. It means if you are replenishing MTA, when the product will stop to sell? We really don't know. Maybe fall drastically. Even for fast movers. Sorry, just, just a comment about this. It doesn't mean that we cannot implement uh, automatic process, but it's really, really complicated to read the sign and say, okay, this is going to stop now, or even something which is in a shorter time than a replenishment lead time, because one replenishment lead time before you should stop doing this. Even for fast movers, there is some level of su substitutability related with colors or style. In this level of uh, wide variety, some products are so close than the, than the others. It means sometimes the new collection for the same group of products have only a little change, if, uh, like uh, colors for the next season or some details some fashion remember, information. Yeah. Remember that there's some, there must be some kind of coordination, right? You cannot just change one collection to the other, which is completely different, because otherwise the look of the store will be a mess. So there is some kind of phase in, phase out. And during this period, eventually you can have some products that match with the previous collection. So it means that there are some kind of similarity between the products that some part can be, uh, I would say, uh, if you don't have one, eventually you go and buy another one, which is not so different from the, from the previous. Okay. Even with the very fast lead time and a very integrated uh, chain, sometimes the company is not prepared to handle with MTA so quickly as it is necessary. Because warehouse, we need to check if there is a space enough to stock the new MTA items, or production capacity for building initial inventories are not available in the short period, or we have some problems with buffer uh, definition because we don't have certainty about the sales future. Yeah, remember that this, in this kind of environment you, you are in a very dynamic, so normally 100% of the 
Factories work on an MTO basis. They don't have, uh, they don't carry stocks due to the risks that, that are involved. So whenever you are moving from MTO to MTA, you have to make some check-ins in order to see if they can handle MTA in the logistics systems. They have enough space in the warehouse, even the capacity production because they normally they have committed uh, and they still have collections, so it means that there is some kind of fluctuation which is very strong. So we have to define the buffers. Uh, we are not talking about uh, hundreds, we are talking about million of uh, SKUs that they have to make some, some kind of calculations in the buffers in some cases. So uh, they have to have capacity to run this, uh, this kind of analysis. So basically we have to make some check-ins before you take a decision to, to move a significant part of your business to, to MT. Then when uh, raw material availability is uncertain, special agreement with uh, raw material vendors may be required. Then we need to involve some uh, external suppliers to check if it's possible to replenish raw material in a fastly time to support the MTA. Okay? Then, what to change to? In this situation, that produce two fast movers in MTA, maybe you can have this negative branch, the injection as produce in MTO. Why this can be good? Maybe you, if we have some advantages, we need to check if which is this advantages. For MTO replenishment, we provide, we provide a better control process over quantity and priorities. Compared with the MTA, in MTA we have a automatic open, open orders. It means we, we don't control if, or check if some new orders are open. This, if we need to replenish some buffers, we open the orders without check if these new products have some sustainability or sustainability. Substitutability. Yeah, complicated word. Remember that when we are talking about MTA here, we are talking about having the products, the MTA, on the stores, on the warehouses, on the central house, which is the plant warehouse, and eventually go up to the uh, raw material. So we are talking about the whole uh, supply chain. Okay. Based on the number of times a fast, move, a fast mover is, is replenished by, MTA, uh, by MTO, we can assess the product's shelf, shelf life and eventually move to MTA. Some, pro, some products that appear in the list or, or was replenished by MTO frequently, maybe this product have more time, more shelf life than we expect or suppose in the start. We can use it as a pilot for testing shelf life seasonal products. It means sometimes we have a product that we suppose the, the shelf life is very short for one specific event or one specific short season. In, in Brazil it's common, some products are designed only to carnival. Then we suppose after carnival this product doesn't sell anymore. But if you can check, some products even are to design to a specific season or a specific event, maybe you can check with MTO if these appear in the fast mover list. Just one comment about this, this slide, about shelf life. What normally happens is that uh, normally the people from the commercial area defines the shelf life of the product, which means that they decide when it will uh, appear in the stores and then when it's supposed to be killed, right? Many times, they, I would say, their forecast is wrong. So I remember that one, uh, one meeting that we had with the CEO of the company and he made a very interesting comment, which is, 
Instead of deciding when we are going to kill a product, let the customer define what is the life of this product. Let the system indicate when we should kill it. Okay. Then let's check some criteria for identify fast movers. Using the last one, four weeks of actual sale data, identify products that sell much more than the average category, replenished by the same distribution center. It means we try to check the validation of the market for some products. Maybe some products can appear in the list with the first week, or some products uh, appear in two, three, four weeks. Valid only the items in MTO. It means if some items are in MTA, we don't include this item in the list because they are in automatic replenishment. And consider only products that have good margins. This point is important because some products have good margins even after discounting. Because in the, in the first point, we take off the list, the items that was discounted. But sometimes, even discounted have a very good margin. Then we need to check if it's feasible to produce this item. Checking how many days of sales based on average sales data and speed velocity is covered with the, the actual stock in the supply chain. Checking if sales are not affected by seasonal behavior. Then in this case, we need to some interferes for product managers or somebody uh, that understand and know about the seasonal events or some specific situations in the market. And verify raw material availability, capabi capabilities to produce, or external replenishment time if you are not producing this product in internally. Then let's check some business impact when we did a pilot in the first uh, 16 weeks, during the 16 weeks in, the, in this year. The current criteria for flagging fast movers is, is very conservative. Today we consider something around 80 times more sales than the average of category. Okay? And we replenish only 40% of the universe, the fast movers that was identified. So just, just you, uh, we have, for doing this kind of uh, work, just to give you some, there's some, there's some uh, kind of B, BI involved, because we are talking about millions of SKUs that run calculations every week in order to flag this kind of, uh, this kind of items. It's a, so it's a very dynamic process here in order to exactly to define this, uh, these items. Okay. Then, in these uh, 16 weeks, we replenish uh, eight, uh, 29 million reais with throughput, only the pilot. Okay? If this 29 million, it's considered only 4% of universe. If you have, if we have uh, replenished all the universe, we can replenish 72 million reais. This is the impact on the throughput, which means the margin. So what we take into account is the historical data and make an assessment of the sales, the speed of sales of the product, and then multiply it by uh, the number of days that we had stockouts, and then we come up with this with these numbers. Okay, and the potential throughput for 20 for 52 weeks in the year, it's around 2,035 million reais in the year. It means something around 49 percent more profit for the company, only with this initiative. Just, okay. just to give you some uh, idea of what it, what it means in, in dollars, the dollars is around four now. It's uh, very high. So uh, 
We're talking about almost 80 million dollars in a year. It's not, it's not a small number. It's a huge impact. Okay, so how does this um, resonate on the, on the solution itself? So I would like to show a zoom of specific part related to the improvement of fast movers. There are some other things which we mentioned here, like for example, having capacity. Uh, we have to monitor capacity for, and allocate capacity for MTA and MTO, but this is uh, something which is another part, so we would spend too much time on, on going on this. So uh, the idea is to, to zoom on the, I would say, the this part specifically of the of the SNT3 and how how we could deal with with that and and what are the the main uh, actions. Okay, so the basically on the level three we would put uh, improve fast movers availability and uh, in level four we have four main objectives: of identified fast movers, checking fast movers replenishment feasibility, replenishing fast movers in MTO in replenishment fast movers in MTA. So let's take a look on the, each one of the entities. So 3.12, so the company operates with a large number of SKUs, but their relative contribution to sales and margin are, is different. Power law distribution prevails. Power law is the, exactly the, the representation of the power law is the curve that we have shown. What is interesting about this is that when you look at a, a big uh, retail, Normally, it's in a store. It normally it's structured in departments. For example, in this case, they have woman, man, right? Children. Then inside of the department, you have the the um, sorry. So the the group, the group. So which is man, woman, child, for example. Then inside the group, you have the departments. For example, in the woman, you have fitness. And you have night, uh, night clothes, accessories, and things like this. And inside this, this uh, uh, groups, you have the, the SKU, right? So what is interesting is that when you dig down and you drill down from the department until the group of merchandise, which is, a, uh, I would say, a smaller part of the whole business, you still have this kind of characteristics. There is some kind of uh, fractal uh, behavior on this. And this happens because we are talking about thousands of, of SKUs, or even millions in some cases. So fast movers are more important than the rest. These are the, what we call the head. So significant sales and margin can be captured when availability of fast movers is high. So the Objective is the company always has in its warehouses enough inventory to satisfy immediately any reasonable demand for of fast movers. What are the parallel assumptions? The company has to support simultaneously and permanently two systems, make to order and make to availability. To avoid any clash between the two systems, it's essential that the capacity is properly managed, as, as we mentioned before. We have some kind of allocation is required. When the information of sellout is available, fast movers can be effectively identified. So what we have to do in terms of action, the company implement, implements a process to identify fast movers and decide which is the more appropriate way to replenish it, MTA or MTO. Sufficient assumption is better to be approximately right than precisely wrong. So let's dig in the first entity, identify fast movers. Fast movers. Only after launched, a fast mover can be identified. So here, the main message is: forget about forecast. The odds of accurately uh, forecasting a fast mover is the same of winning a lottery. So basically, it's zero. So that's why we need to, as Rami was showing yesterday, we need to really reduce the time from reading the market. So the strategy is fast movers, products are properly, uh, are properly identified. So this is the objective. Parallel assumptions, a very strong indication of market taste is captured by the actual consumption, and it's relatively easy to gather relevant data. 
Normally, these data are already available in their ERP systems, especially stock and, 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 uh, and sales data. When stakeholders understand the relative importance of fast movers, they adjust the process to provide special treatment for them. Of course, when we see the numbers here, it's very easy to, to have the buy-in, especially for the top managers to treat this, uh, these items in a special way. So the tactic is the company runs some analysis based on actual consumption in order to identify the fast movers and periodically updates according to the market trends and behaviors. The market's very dynamic. The process are adjusted to, to point out any issues that prevent high availability of fast movers. So it's a kind of poogie process. Then after we identify the check mover, the fast movers, we have to check the feasibility of uh, replenishing them. So the necessary assumption is the chance of not having all required material and preparations available for producing a fast mover is not negligible. Remember that they, they produce basically on MTO. And not necessarily you are going to have all the things uh, readily prepared for, for replenishing it. So the strategy, the company always knows fast movers feasibility. Parallel assumption, company has its has its ERP systems information regarding the, M, the bill of material, production routing, and raw material of availability of all products. Sometimes suppliers can provide raw materials in a very short lead time. It depends a lot, and this is one of the key uh, strategic elements. Uh, depends a lot on the uh, supplier raw material supplier lead time. So uh, getting some uh, partnerships with some suppliers, strategic suppliers, is very important. So the tactic is the list of feasible fast movers is available and updated on a weekly basis. So then we plunge in fast movers in MTO. So why we need to we need this? When the replenishment lead time is relatively long compared to the shelf life, Produced availability can increase obsolescence risk. That's the main reason that we, uh, before doing anything, we, we need to really be sure that, uh, or make a very good assessment of the, of the shelf life of the product. So the strategy is, or the objective is the company capitalizes on its fast movers without increasing the risk of obsolescence. Parallel assumption is comparing the stock available to the actual speed of sales provides a good enough information to define if a fast mover is in a stock out. Sorry, stock, a stock out risk, yeah. Actually, when we, when we check the information, the, the sales data information about what is the rate of sales or the speed of sales, and we have the stock available, we can see how many days in the future or how many sales days in the future we have. Based on this and the shelf life, we can have a very good indication of how much we have to produce on these specific items and when we need to have these items. For example, if we still have, uh, if we st we still have a, I would say, 30 days shelf life, we have all the material available and you have just covering the next two or three days, uh, this item is, I mean, I would say, in high priority and we we should consider this uh, data to define what, can, what quantities the, we, we should issue in the MTO order. So the tactic is, tacti, tactic is fast movers which are in risk of shorters are produced in MTO. Of course, the ones that are not in risk of shorters or eventually the stock available covers all the shelf life, we decide not to produce. So that's it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.